Hey everyone, today we're going to show you some game changing tips in Final Cut Pro 10 that will help your editing become faster and more enjoyable. My name's Gav from GK Videography and on this channel we help you become a better video creator with straight to the point no waffle videos uploaded weekly. So let's jump on the Mac and get straight to it. So I've been a Final Cut Pro editor for the last, what, 10 years and even some of the ones I'll show you today I didn't know about until recently. So there may be some you do know but stay tuned throughout this video because some of these will save you so much time. I really wish I'd have known about them a few years ago when I started using this program. So the first one today is adjusting audio volume. Now you think that's probably a, a simple thing. We've got a project here which I shot a little while back, a mountain bike edit, and we've got some music here at the beginning. Now, if you hover over the line here, you know that you can change the, the, the volume, but when you click and hold, it's really annoying to get the exact, you've got to move the mouse really slow, but if you were to hold the command key while doing this and then you click and drag, it makes it a lot less sensitive and easier to adjust. So tip number two is to do with the magnetic timeline. Now it's a great feature, but sometimes can be a little bit frustrating and I'll show you an example right now. If we want to move, say this clip here, it has all these connected clips with it and you just want to move this clip but when you try to do that, it moves with the connected clips. Even with the position tool, it still does the same. However, if we hold what's called the tilde key, tilde, I wasn't sure what that was at first, but I'll put the graphics underneath so you can see the tilde key. You'll see that your cursor has this little orange icon. I don't even know what that is. If anyone knows, let me know. And then if we just drag that while holding the tilde key with the position tool selected, we can move that clip without taking the connected clips with it. Great, right? Moving on to number three, we have the good old magnetic timeline again. We wanna delete a clip in the timeline, uh, say this one here, and when we do, obviously, it puts the rest of the, uh, the project up with it. So if we just do Command Z, and say we just wanna delete that, but we wanna leave a space, simple, shift, delete, and it leaves what you call a slug, or some people call it a gap clip, uh, in place of it. So it's not affecting the rest of the edit further down uh, the timeline. Now this is a, a favorite of mine when I found this out actually pretty recently, funnily enough. When you've got a project with lots and lots of clips in the browser, and you've got your edit laid out. Sometimes it's like, well, are there any clips in here that I haven't used yet? And you're kind of scanning through and you're looking at your, your viewer thinking, yeah, yeah, I've used that, I've used that. However, there's a much quicker way to know what clips you've used. So firstly, we just go up to view in the toolbar at the top. We then go down to browser, and then we want to select used media ranges. So then that'll put these little orange lines beneath all the clips that you've used and that section of that clip that's in the edit. So you can see all of these have been used. So it's a great way to just have a quick visual scan of your browser and look at the clips that you've not used yet. So this is a super simple one and not just exclusive to Final Cut Pro 10. You can actually do this within Finder and things like that. Say we want to copy this clip for whatever reason. Sometimes you want to duplicate a clip. Normally I would do Command C to copy, move the playhead to the point I want to copy it to and then do Command V. And then if we were to just do a much simpler way by holding down Option, click and drag, it'll then duplicate it. So number six is a quick way to trim video files once they're already in the timeline. Now, if we look at this clip of Mitch coming down the mountain on his bike, say I wanted to cut it here and delete this section. So I would get the blade tool out, cut that, press A for the selection tool, highlight the clip, delete, and it would be done. However, we would just undo that. A quicker way would to have this, uh, be have this clip selected. And then when we get to this point here, we just do option and closed bracket so we're using the square brackets not the standard so square bracket there would cut that and move the edit up if we were to undo that and say we wanted to cut this section we would then do option and open bracket and then it would cut it from that point to the left now number seven is one that i use consistently all day every day rather than zooming in and out of a timeline say i want to get 
to the whole size. There you go, so I can see the whole edit. Um, I would just zoom out. However, if you were zoomed in and you just want to zoom out to the whole width of the edit, it's a simple Shift Z and then it fits to size. So the next one is a quick one regarding transitions. We've got two clips here that I want to add a fade to black or fade to color as it's called. So you would go over to your transitions menu, you would grab this and drag it over here. However, if I just undo that, a quick one would be to select, as you see, we've got a yellow line between the two clips, then command T will automatically add your default transition. So for me, my default transition is the fade to color. Yours may be a cross default, dissolve. Uh, if you want to have uh, a different one as you, your default transition, the simple thing to do is just to right click it and make default. And then every time you do that command T shortcut, it will add that transition to the clips. So this is number nine and one of my favorites. And when I found this out, I was just like, thank God, because this annoyed me so much when I was getting into Final Cut Pro 10. So with this clip here, I want to delete it, say for example, but as you can see, these audio sound effect clips are attached to this one video. So if I was to delete it, or to delete it, they would disappear. However, if I want to connect these to say this clip, so when I delete that, it doesn't disappear. All I need to do is press on the audio file, command option and press again. And as you can see here, it's now connected to this. However, we've still got this one here that's connected. So again, we just do command option, move the playhead to an area when it connected and click there and then it connects to this clip. So if I delete this, the audio files stay there. Oh my God, this was so good when I found this out. Let me know if you knew that one already because I wish I'd have known that years ago. The finale is to do with compound clips. Now, a compound clip, if you didn't know, is a way of nesting, what they call nesting in some of the editors, several clips into one clip. So there's several within that one. And I'll show you quickly what that means. So say I want to add all these as one clip. I highlight them all, I right click, make them a compound clip, click OK, and as you can see that's now one clip. But say I double click into that, and I can see them here, but it's outside of the timeline. I click back, but I want to break them apart again. So the shortcut for that is Shift Command G, and it just uncompounds them, if that's the right word. But that just then breaks them apart to the original form. I absolutely fell in love with that shortcut when I found it out. So which one of those was your favorite? Were there any in there that you already knew? Any ones that were a surprise that made you just go? We'd love to know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.